Well, this might be a healthcare profession, but it is also a music degree. So um, people must have music background to enter this degree program. Um, our, re our requirements are that um, a, a prospective student has enough development on a primary instrument, which could be any instrument, any wind instrument, guitar, um, any string instrument, piano, or voice. They need enough development on their primary instrument to be accepted as a music major. Um, this is important because our primary means of engaging people in therapy is music. We have to have well-developed relationships with music ourselves, and we have to have good music skill in order to do this. So as students come in, once they pass that audition that allows them to be a music major, um, we help to develop not just their primary area of performance, but also all of the other areas of music that we often would use in a clinical setting. So all of our students have a certain level of keyboard skills, of guitar skills, of vocal skills, even if those instruments are not their primary instrument. Then of course, we're spending a lot of time in courses that tie that clinical piece to the music engagement piece. And there's an extensive amount of, of clinical training that is a part of an undergraduate music therapy program. So as students are learning in the classroom, they are then under the guidance of a board certified music therapist working directly with clients so that they're applying and practicing what they're learning about that music engagement with actual clients. Um, so uh, at the end of their regular in college coursework, there's a, a six month clinical internship, um, typically 1,040 hours or in that area. Um, and that internship is the student's um, time to really apply their music skill and their knowledge about therapy with clients in um, a setting or in an agency that is related to what they most want to do um, when they have their degree conferred. Um, that six months is very um, important for development and I always compare it to um, a nurse. I always say you probably don't want to have a shot given to you by the nurse who read about how to do that in a book. Right? These are clinical things, so that clinical practice is very important to um, development to reach basic competency level. At the completion of the degree program, then those students qualify to st sit for the board certification exam. That's the certification board for music therapists. At the undergrad degree, because there is so much that's packed into that degree program, what we really are developing are basic clinical skills. There is not time in that four and a half plus years, believe it or not, to really focus on an area of specialty. However, during that time, students do learn where they are comfortable, where their personality and their knowledge and their music skills really lend them to working. And so most undergraduate level students have an area or areas that they are most interested in and have put more time into developing the skills for. Um, now, at a graduate level, we do, we do start to talk about specialization then, because at that point, there is time to really hone in in a specialized kind of area. So, um, on the graduate level, you'll find people who are really um, kind of digging into the medical aspects of music therapy, or perhaps to the um, mental health aspects, addictions, um, things like NICU settings, things like oncology settings. Um, those settings tend to have a higher level of skill need, and that's th at that graduate level, that's when um, students will really kind of hone in on, a, on an area that is more what you might call their expertise. 
We have music therapists working in any kind of setting you can imagine. Working with folks who have intellectual and developmental limitations. We also have people working in um, general hospitals. In the children's hospitals we have music therapists. You also can find music therapists working in hospice and home health care. There are music therapists working in all kinds of other settings, such as schools. There are some states where there are um, all kinds of music therapists in the school systems um, working with those students who have limitations. Um, you'll find people all through healthcare systems. You'll find music therapists working, as I mentioned, in forensic settings. You'll find them working in specialty kinds of settings, like kidney dialysis or um, in rehab hospitals. You'll find them working in addictions uh, programs. You'll find them doing things like working with children in foster care. So uh, anywhere you have people who need help functioning better in their daily lives, you're gonna find music therapists. The program has been here at IPFW since 1974. We just graduated the largest group ever. Um, so the program is really um, blossoming. Our graduates have an extremely high rate of job placement and um, they pass the board certification exam first time taking the test. Our graduates are out there really, really forging some roads for music therapy and we're very proud of them. They are excellent therapists and um, we know that they're really providing great service to the clients that they have. I think that I'm constantly amazed when I go in and evaluate our students at um, th the level of skill that they are able to develop just even on this basic level. Um, so, um, you know, I'm thinking in particular of a student who just graduated, who um, had his practicum, his hands-on clinical training, with a young man who was court-ordered for treatment in a group home. Um, and this student um, just built this beautiful relationship with this teenage boy. And this, this client loved rap, that's what he loved. He loved rap. Um, this was not in the repertoire of our student. And so when I went in to evaluate him in his session, and in this session, the client comes in and says, okay, you start. And the student breaks out into a rap. And it was amazing just because I couldn't imagine that he would be able to do that, and he did. And the client shook his head and he said, yeah, that was good. Um, so, you know, when I see students developing those kinds of relationships and being able to put aside their own fears and, and their, you know, their focus on themselves and really just be there with their clients, you see amazing things happen all the time. And, um, you know, I, I see that happen with our students again and again and again. The thing that qualifies people best to be a music therapist is people need to be caring, they need to be responsible, reliable, they need to be well trained, they need to have good music skills, and that's what makes a good music therapist.